Good morning. I'm Stephen Lee. I'm an elder at First Presbyterian Church in Mesquite, Texas, and I'm also the teacher of the Discipleship Sunday School class there. Today we're continuing with our study of the Gospel of John, and I'd like to remind you that our uh, curriculum is based upon the daily Bible study series by Professor William Barclay, and that we're using the new Revised Standard Version of the Bible as our scripture text. Last week, we began chapter 10, and more specifically, verses 1 through 6, in which Jesus begins that beautiful metaphor that he is the Good Shepherd. Today, we're going to read and study verses 7 through 10. So let's get started. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and to destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Jews did not understand the meaning of the story of the Good Shepherd that we discussed last week in verses 1 through 6. So Jesus, plainly and without concealment, applied it to himself. He began by saying, I am the door. In this parable, Jesus spoke about two kinds of sheepfolds. In the villages and towns, the, there were communal sheepfolds where all the village flocks were sheltered when they returned home at night. These folds were protected by a strong door. Only the guardian of the door held the key. It was to that kind of fold that Jesus referred last week when we studied verses 1 through 6, specifically in verses 2 and 3. But when the sheep were out on the hills in the warm season and did not return at night to the village, they were collected into sheep folds on the hillsides. These hillside sheep folds were just open spaces enclosed by a wall. And in them, there was an opening by which the sheep came in and went out. But there was no door of any kind. The shepherd himself lay across the opening. No sheep could get in or out except over his body. In the most literal, literal sense, the shepherd was the door. That is what Jesus was thinking when he said, I am the door. Through him and through him alone, we find access to God. Through him, said Paul, we have access to the Father. That from Ephesians verse 2, sorry, chapter 2, verse 18. The writer to the Hebrew calls him the new and living way. Hebrews 10, 20. Jesus opens the way to God. Until Jesus came, people could think of God as, at best, a stranger, and as, at worst, an enemy. He's the door through whom alone entrance to God becomes possible. To describe something of what that entrance to God means, Jesus uses a well-known Hebrew phrase. He says that through him we can go in and come out. To be able to come and go unmolested was the Jewish way of describing a life that is absolutely secure and safe. When people can go in and out without fear, it means their country is at peace. It means that the forces of law and order are supreme and that they enjoy perfect security. The leader of the nation is the one who can bring them out and lead them in. That from Numbers, chapter 27, verse 17. 
The person who is obedient to God is said to be blessed when he comes in and blessed when going out. Deuteronomy 28.6 A child is one who is not yet able by himself to go out and to come in. That from 1 Kings 3 verse 7. And the psalmist is certain that God will keep him in his going out and his coming in. That from that beloved Psalm 121, verse 8. Once people discover through Jesus Christ what God is like, a new sense of safety and security enters into their lives. Jesus said that those who came before him were thieves and robbers. He was not referring to the great succession of prophets and heroes, but to those adventurers who were continually arising in Palestine. They promised that if people would follow them, they would bring in the Golden Age. All these claimants were simply insurrectionists. They believed that people would have to wade through blood to get to the Golden Age. During Jesus' time, Josephus speaks of there being at least 10,000 disorders in Judea, tumults caused by zealots who did not mind dying if their hopes of conquest were fulfilled. But Jesus is saying there have been men who claimed that they were leaders from God. They believed in war, murder, and assassination. Their way only leads further and further away from God. Jesus' way is the way of peace and love and life. And if we take it, it leads ever closer and closer to God. There have been and still are those who believe that the golden age must be brought in with violence, class warfare, bitterness, and destruction. It is the message of Jesus that the only way that leads to God in heaven and to the golden age on earth is the way of love. Jesus claims that he came that men and women might have life and might have it more abundantly. Verse 10 is one of my favorite verses in the whole book of John. I claim that you might have life and have it abundantly. The Greek phrase used for having it more abundantly means to have a superabundance of a thing. To be a follower of Jesus, to know who he is and what he means, is to have a superabundance of life. When we try to live our own lives, life is dull and dispirited. When we walk with Jesus, there comes a new vitality, a superabundance of life. It is only when we live with Christ that life really becomes worth living. Thank you for joining me today. God bless each and every one of you.